This is the Better Together Podcast. I'm Micah. And I'm Rochelle. Here we go. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. It is great to be able to be with you, see you. No? No. We can't see him yet. No. One day. (laughs) One day. It is really great to be back with you. We are uh, recording on Black Friday here. We are. Uh, So we are not shopping. No, we did that early this morning. No, we didn't. We slept. (laughs) That's very true. (laughs) Although I was up early, so... (laughs) Yes, you were up early. Um, Okay, so today we are going to be talking about how life is after one child versus after all of the others. Yeah, there's quite a difference between (laughs) the planning for one child and just, you know, just who you are with one child versus having multiple. And so this, this truthfully should be pretty fun. Yeah, we think that this one could be pretty funny. Um, but I guess that will panic. <laughs> right. And also probably, <laughs> oh, it's probably relatable. Um, I told Rochelle, I said there, there's going to be two camps of people with this one, maybe, maybe a third, but, uh, there's going to be the people that are having their first kid or just had it. And they're going, oh man, I, I don't know. That doesn't sound right. Surely we need all of this stuff or <laughs> yes. we have to do it this way. And then there's the other camp where they're driving around, you know, and it's the husband and the wife and they're just slapping each other going, man, we were so silly back then, <laughs> you know? No, it just doesn't matter. And then there's the third group that listen to this show and they don't have kids, so they don't even care. Yeah, they're the kids that are like eyeing those parents in the grocery store going, we're not going to be those parents. <laughs> right. Hey, just a, a little bit of a um, spoiler alert. You will be those parents. Right. You will say that thing that you said, I will never say this. This is what my dad <laughs> said. So true. What a load of malarkey. Uh, nice word. Get it? That's probably what my dad said. Probably. And there it is. All right. So before we do that, we've got a special announcement. My record comes out, my CD. It's not a record, actually, although that would be really fun if it was on vinyl, but it's not. (laughs) Uh, It's a CD slash MP3, iTunes, Spotify, whatever. Wherever Mm -hmm. you get your music outside of the vinyl store, you can probably get it. And uh, (laughs) and so if you will, search Micah Brooks on Amazon, iTunes. You can go to micahbrooks.com. It's a six-song original worship song EP called All Things New. And uh, I had the privilege of writing several of the songs with um, some Nashville uh, Christian songwriters writers and some friends of mine and and I really really enjoyed it and the 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 output of the you know the project is pretty good I think so and I'm not one to release things I just I don't like it so true man <laughs> he has a real hard time so this has been about two years You're right in the making so from songwriting to to putting this out December 8th is when it comes out 2017 yes so a rush out and get that now you can also um, if you are interested in helping us make this happen Micah has a Kickstarter going right now. Oh, that's a good point. And you can go to micahbrooks.com for more information on his Kickstarter. Yeah, it's on the front page, or you can even go right to your Kickstarter uh, app or the website and search Micah Brooks, and you'll find it there. Uh, there's a three-minute video, and it's 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 a little awkward, so <laughs> it's uh, that's great, but the, the songs are cool. So yes. So Check it out. Thanks would, so much. We would appreciate your help with that Kickstarter, and... If you pledge really high, you get to have dinner with us. What? Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> you know, and if you can't afford that one, which it's really a ridiculous price, uh, if you live in town and you really want to have dinner with us, we're pretty easy dates. So yeah. just let us know. Yeah, let us know. We would be happy to meet with and you. And that, that Kickstarter campaign ends, I think, December 8th. So you'll have to hurry out to yes. that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's get the show rolling then. That's right. So when we started having kids, we made a lot of really grand statements about things that we were always going to do or never going to do, which, <laughs> you know, the whole thing about never say always or never. Yeah. The, w- these were grand too. <laughs> yeah. Really grand. Like we were only going to feed our kids organic food. Right. Just, just milk from the cow, baby. Yeah. Um, no hey, middleman. Guys. We don't have money. (laughs) Right. Organic. Once they slap that label on it, that's 40% more. Right. So 
nothing wrong with organic. If, uh, you know, we would love to feed our kids organic food, but you know, when they only eat peanut butter sandwiches, it's a little harder to get there. Right. So now, now we buy it by the gallon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. brought home this peanut butter the other day and I about cried thinking, oh my goodness, this had to be a $16 drum of this. What are you doing? <laughs> and I was just really excited because when they increased the size of the peanut butter jar, they made it wider and not deeper. So you're not up to your elbows in peanut butter when you're scraping the bottom of that Ladies and gentlemen, it's the small things in life. <laughs> so we we had all these grand statements about the ty- types of parents that we would be and the types of children that we would have. And um, we are none of those things. Right. You realize, you realize, too, like that your parents, you put them on a pedestal, you took them off a pedestal, and all of those things in the first couple of weeks of having a kid, and you realize that they probably didn't know anything either. Right, yes. (laughs) It's really fun to think about. So we joke around a lot uh, (laughs) because we have a lot of friends who are moving into the multiple children phase of life that there are some things you can only say when you only have one child. I have one of those. Uh, Things like... Um, yeah, I, I follow my baby around all day and clean up after them. Right. I have a tidy house. Yeah. Or, um, just things about the amount of attention that your child gets. You know, you're only concerned about, about your children getting enough attention when you move from one to two. After that, you don't really care. (laughs) You know, I think too, it changes everything. So like when you're, when you're dating, that somebody says, all right, when are you guys going to get married? Well, initially, or right after you get married, they say, when's the the first child coming? You know, and then you have the first one, they say, when are you having the second? And then you start, if you have more than two, people start to look at you kind of like you're a Quaker, you know, (laughs) like, what are you building a basketball team here? What's going on? And uh, so it, and it, it changes, um, (laughs) like for us, I think it's funny that when, um, when we had just one and even two, uh, our parents who are, are, are wonderful people w- agreed to have the kids all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then once we had more than two, it was like, okay, well, we we can have two. <laughs> that's where it ends. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so so maybe that's that's a s- strike and then having fewer kids call them. I don't know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it, t- it does. It changes everything. The whole zone defense, uh, the idea that... But, you can't you can't possibly keep one hand on three kids at all times. Right. It's impossible. And or so eyes. Yeah. And so you go you go to who's the biggest threat? <laughs> who's <laughs> who's gonna cause the most damage here? And in our house, uh it's it's definitely the the youngest right now. But I can only imagine what uh, as our little boy, our firstborn boy here grows even bigger and can hurt more and more things what, that oh, he's gonna man. get more and more of our attention. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny how suddenly a five year old becomes a babysitter. Yeah. Or at least or at least like the the teller of everything going on in the house, you know? Right. How he somehow can simultaneously get in trouble for for not telling us things and then also for tattling right and then i'm like and then i say those things and rochelle's like you have confused him (laughs) through and through (laughs) what do i do he's not supposed to tattle but i'm really grateful (laughs) it was my popcorn (laughs) you can't eat popcorn babe that's true yeah so so we're going to kind of go in this episode topically, and it's random. It's not in order at all. We could have done that, but we didn't. <laughs> um, and so uh, we're going to kind of volley back and forth with different things that change. Um, so I'm up first, and the first thing that really changes that I thought of was play dates. <laughs> I'm a stay at home mom. Play dates are like the bread and butter of your week uh, if you're a stay at home mom. Um, but only if you only have one or maybe two. So what is a play date exactly? How would you describe that? Or basically it's time for moms to get together and ignore our kids. Um, that's not entirely true, but, (laughs) um, but yes, it's times that you get together with your friends and their kids and let your kids play. And so with your first child, you're really thinking a lot of things like, well, it's important for my child to be socially developed. So I'm going to play, set up play dates with my friends so that I get some social time with adults so that I don't learn only to talk in toddler. <laughs> and 
And my kid will get that time to learn things like how to share at six months old. Yeah, I know um, she she spoke of the, the mom play date. I tried to have a play date one time and that that's where it ended one time uh, with one of my, he was my college roommate and he's got kids and, and now of course we have kids and and so nothing nothing burned that fire out quicker than than, <laughs> than trying to have a quote unquote play date together. Um, it just turned into me and uh, and my friend Daniel um, talking and then forgetting about the kids. So yeah, it was like it was a little scary. Actually. It was like mayhem. It wasn't it wasn't smart. So anytime we meet now, it, we try to not have the kids with us. Yeah, you really have to have the ability to multitask. To yeah. have a have a play date. Yeah, I heard I heard uh, Jim Gaffigan say women can multitask. I'm having a hard time just tasking, <laughs> so which is pretty true. So our our play date ended, you know, probably with tears. Yeah, probably. Um, well, play dates are are a lot different. Once you have more than, you know, two, I'll say two. You can really do it with two. Still, it just depends. See, it's different when you're sitting with a, it's two moms and you each have two kids. That's two moms and four kids. You, you can handle that. But when you start to add more moms and more kids, suddenly you're sitting there and they're like four moms and 17 kids. That sounds like like a horrible family reunion or it something. It really it's is. It's just like, and I want to go home. There are just way too many personalities and kids end up fighting and you end up spending your entire play date just refereeing. And it's no fun. So it's, it's too much work. So play dates change. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this one before, but it is so true. I think about the first time that we ever took a trip as a family of three. So me, uh, Rochelle, and our little boy. And uh, so we packed the car, which I think it was my uh, SUV at yes, the time. absolutely. And uh, we filled it as full as you can possibly get it. Like I remember going, okay, well, now we're full. We can't bring this. <laughs> we yeah. can't bring that. We There's couldn't just buy the anything on the trip. <laughs> I mean, granted, it was a long trip, but we were <laughs> the things we were trying to throw in there, <laughs> didn't they didn't matter. And I remember even... We packed a bathtub for the kid, which is the funniest thing. It was a whale bathtub. I'll never forget it. And uh, and and this, I remember the next trip or the trip that we took recently. Uh, there were three kids involved. We were going for ten days, and you could see out the back. It was like <laughs> the only we thing. We literally that, just had suitcases. The only thing that we had to remember was was the iPad that <laughs> kept them <laughs> occupied for hours and hours. You know, we didn't bring the bathtub this time. Heck, I don't even know if we bathed them. But <laughs> but it was so funny that first trip. I just remember we had to exclude things. That's where we were at. And if you're a first time parent, you don't need half of what you think oh, you'll yeah. need for those kind of trips and unless you're going to the middle of the jungle if you really do need it you can you can either borrow one where you're going or even buy it at, you know yeah. if it absolutely came to that um but it was so funny to think about i the still difference. remember your aunt's face when we walked oh, into her yeah. house with that bathtub oh man and the in the amount of trips that it took for me to unpack <laughs> everywhere we went we went to the hotel and the the people at the check-in station as they watched me bring in two fully loaded uh hotel trolleys full of stuff for the one <laughs> i mean gee whiz don't do that yeah don't do that it, it makes it just a lot more stressful <laughs> you, when you do that you better believe it so the <laughs> visits once you get home from the hospital these look so different now micah and i were talking about this for me this was different depending on the time of the year the baby was born our first was born in the summer. And so, you know, I was a first time mom, but I was also really exhausted. So I kind of was just like hand sanitizer will work. Just squirt some hand sanitizer and you'll be fine. But Micah met every single person at the door and was like, bathroom, no, right. go well, wash your hands. Not a, I mean, I did this sanitizer too, but it was definitely a, you know, th there was a Micah force field that they had to yeah. cross through that if they had not <laughs> cleansed their hands, they were not getting in yes. to see the precious baby. Now, yeah. our second came along during cold and flu season. Right. And for that one, yes, there was a Rochelle force field on that one. 
but it was so like we have friends actually relatives that just had a baby and you know they have a, a really good reason for it but i i re- watched their their facebook posts with the list of do's and don'ts that were going to happen <laughs> when you came to visit them and and i mean you would have had to have had three or four minutes at the front door to read these things you know and <laughs> and i do think that that some of that was legitimate but uh, others of it is just the first kid mm-hmm. um because the the next time you have a baby this you've already got one little one little uh, bacteria trap running yeah. around. <laughs> so you, what do you just throw your hands up? Yeah. Well, and with subsequent children, you get less visitors. <laughs> so do. it's not quite as big of a deal because, you know, people, people don't want to deal with your toddler when they come <laughs> to see, they just want to see your baby. <laughs> right. So they mostly drop food and run. They also, uh, the, <laughs> the more kids you get, the less and less acknowledgement you get as a parent is like, oh man, you're just, you're just the, the surrogate. You're just the one that yeah. <laughs> helped bring this beautiful baby here. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's what the guy does, right? Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that with the first one, I've, I've always been, uh, now if my dad listens to this, he'll laugh as you know, <laughs> laugh, but I've always been someone that, uh, enjoys a clean house. And, um, it's just, I, I like, uh, things tidy. I, I, it just doesn't work for my brain when there's, there's scatter shot stuff everywhere. And, uh, I remember like with, with our first trying to clean up after him, clean, clean up after ourselves, it became, <laughs> it became an impossible chore by the third baby. I have, uh, completely given up that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's impossible. It's I, a clean once a week. Yeah. Uh, try to do it every day if you can and just get over it. Our three-year-old emptied her dresser during the time she was supposed to be napping the other day. I just closed the door to her room yeah. and move on. We're considering just putting like a laundry basket in her room, just letting her dig through it when she needs to get dressed. So you definitely, uh, you loosen up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, you're, if you're OCD, you got to quit it because yep. it's impossible. Yes, it is. It really is impossible to keep up with everything. So feeding. Yeah, this is a, oh, man. this is definitely, we were, we were caught in this trap initially. <laughs> yes. So with our first, there are all sorts of feeding things that I was just, you know, I was gung ho about. I was going to nurse for a year. Yeah. Our baby was only going to eat organic foods. The schedule was going to be as rigid as possible. Right. We were going to get this baby on a schedule. So Micah read this, you know, almost everybody reads a parenting book. I did not. Right. Um, but Micah did. And he was going to keep us on this schedule somehow from work. And <laughs> um, <laughs> so three weeks in after our baby was born, after our son was born, I got mastitis that abscessed and I ended up in the emergency room to get an abscess drained. Um, they wouldn't even let Micah stay back with me because they said, you won't be able to look at her the same after <laughs> this. Don't tell him anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it was bad. Um, and that ended nursing for us. Uh, it just, you can't do that after that. So, um, so that ended. And then when we started the baby food, I think for for about a year almost after that, you know, when we bought baby food or or whatever, I would only buy the organic brand. Now, I want to take a second here (laughs) to pause because this was before Amazon started charging tax. So we could buy a ton of baby food on Amazon and have it sent prime to us. And we were saving a ton of money. So I buy the organic, right? So So we bought all this organic food and then our child hit like about 18 months and decided he only wanted bread and crackers (laughs) ever. Which is still true. Yeah. He's five. (laughs) That's still what he eats basically. Um, And we gave up now with, then with our second, you know, we tried to reinstitute some things and then she hit her toddler years and you know what she liked yesterday. She doesn't like today kind of thing. But then now we're on number three. And we're still winning with her. <laughs> She'll still eat almost anything. And I know like for the schedule side of things, we 
when we first started, of course, she was doing all the feeding and then the three weeks in hit. So we had to move to formula, which opened wide the gates for daddy to get a chance to feed, yes. which initially was like, yay. And then it was like, oh, because <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of growing up to do. So then we um, we figured out that, uh, you know, that the mill of the night feeding could be traded off. Well, then we began keeping score. Well, you did oh, it. Oh, man. You did it, and yeah. You did it. And so That's I know, stupid, guys. Right. Well, I f- we finally figured out that she does best with, with the uh, the middle of the night, and I do best with the early morning feeding. So that worked out for us. But, um, you know, that that kind of getting that under our belt made it so much better for the, for the next set of kids that came. Oh, yeah. When we figured out how we could each get, like, you know, at least five or six consecutive hours of sleep, that changed our lives. Yeah, because sleep itself... Um, is is such a beautiful thing to think about that you're gonna give your baby you know that you're gonna wake them up you're gonna give them a bottle or you're gonna feed them breast breast milk whatever and then they're gonna do that they're gonna have their wake time and then they're gonna go to sleep and that beautiful cycle is gonna happen uh uninterrupted well what happens when you have multiple kids (laughs) <laughs> it's impossible to keep that going. So if you, you know, if you were rigid initially, there's there's things out of your control now. <laughs> and so, so true. the idea of trying to keep a perfect sleep schedule is 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 pretty heinous. It's not possible. It's not. And and guys, we're talking from the perspective of a family where our kids each have their own room yeah. currently. Um, that's not going to stay forever. Our girls, we've always planned that they were going to share, but um, we have friends who started their kids sharing rooms really early. So you're talking about a a small child that's in the room with with a barely bigger than them child. <laughs> <laughs> and and sleep, I mean sleep just gets really complicated. And it has to be similar to the the feeding schedule thing. It just has to become more of a what's best for everybody. Yes. Um, you know, it's it's it stinks to have to let your your baby have a little less sleep than they'd like, but it's a, it's impossible to keep your 2-year-old completely quiet. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the the duct tape to the wall with the muzzle on is just not legal. <laughs> and uh we don't want to find that out. We're the really hard scoring way. high parent points today. <laughs> this, is, this is getting a little disturbing. Um okay. <laughs> so we're going to step back and well. talk about pregnancy. Now with my first, I I could tell you at any given time, you know, exactly how many weeks and days I was, you know, how far along I was. And I followed all of the rules and I didn't really do that with my others. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit harder to keep track of how far along you are when you're trying to keep track of your child or children and then following the rules, you have to remember the rules. And there are a lot of rules to remember in pregnancy alone. But then when you also have to remember Tylenol dosing instructions and when the baby has napped and did they have peanut butter for lunch today? Okay. So I really can't feed them peanut butter for dinner. Where are they? Yeah, where are my children? Uh, oh, there they are. the toddler has stolen the remote again. <laughs> Let's go on the hunt because she's also demanding Moana for the eight <laughs> hundredth time today. So anyway, all of that stuff—it's just a lot harder to keep track of the rules that you should also be following. So, yeah, pregnancy looks a little different with each with each one. Yeah, they say that um, you take less and less pictures uh, for each kid that comes, which with our new smartphone systems that we have going on, I'm sure that's that's a little bit better than it used to be. But there, but I can tell you that uh, for me, remembering the milestones and what what should happen and what <laughs> what's oh, going man, to happen yeah. was impossible compared, you know, compared to the, when when our first was happening. It was like, okay, we read on the internet he's gonna do he's gonna <laughs> roll over here, and you know he should within this window, and you know, and oh no, he's a little behind or he's a little, a little ahead. Oh or, man, yeah. And uh, and then for I know for the third one, it was there was. We were glad that she was walking, and that's like the one that we 
remembered, but for our others, they were, they took so long before they could walk that it was, we were begging them to walk. Oh, it's so true. And this is one thing that's kind of funny to me is because we have three kids, my friends with one or two kids will ask me questions. I'll be like, well, you know, they're basically experts now. Right. When did this happen? Right. No clue. I have no idea. I have no idea what Liam's first word was. No clue. Or Isley's. Or Jovi's. Well, Jovi's is Moana. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So true. Yeah. She's obsessed with Moana, guys. It's hilarious. So, yeah, it's, you just don't, you're keeping track of too much. And I was like, I was never very good at it. Um, I, I never wrote down stuff. I guess I really, I've always had a really good memory. And I think with, with Liam, I just thought I would just remember things. Like I can tell you how much they weighed, all three of them. That I know. Their birth weight. I can tell you kind of like around the time that they each got their first tooth and, and things like that. First words, you know, that important stuff. No clue. No <laughs> I have idea. To, I have to scratch my head and think about what day they were born. So, <laughs> so I don't know their birth weight. But I have to do them in order, if that makes you feel any better. <laughs> when, I, when I call the pediatrician and they say, <laughs> okay, what's the date of birth on the, per, you know, the child that you're calling on? I have to go through each one of them yeah, to get well, to it. It always sounds a little bit like I kidnapped them. <laughs> right somehow and when i'm trying to name them i name the dogs too and not all the kids aren't always first in line <laughs> that is true and I, I wish it wasn't guys but but it is the dogs still qualify as kids to nope sweet Michael. <laughs> but it that's that definitely changes um so the, the the truth is what we want you to know is if if you have uh, if you're about to be have your first child or you you're in those first stages um relax yeah make sure to one of the things that Rochelle tells people is pri- prioritize what's important um and then and then kind of focus on those things but if you try to do everything all the time you're you're gonna burn out you're not gonna be a strong parent yes you can't you can't you don't want to be the jack of all trades <laughs> when it comes to no. parenting and um and so as she'll get to the challenge at the end but it's basically make sure that you prioritize what's important mm-hmm. yeah i think that's probably the biggest lesson that i've learned with having multiple children um not not just one or even two Um, but once we hit into three kids, I realized that I could have a really clean house or I could be a really good mom. I couldn't do both. I'm not, Micah is clean and tidy by nature. I am not. I had the trash room all the time growing up and, and things like that. And I'm not excited about it. Like it stresses me out too, to live in it, but I can go a day or two. Mike is rolling his eyes at me. <laughs> um, I really can. Um, a day or two before it stresses me out. Um, and then I can go a day or two further just being stressed. But um, I think that was the biggest lesson that I learned, with, especially with our first, was that we are in some ways very fortunately growing up in a time with a ton of technology and a ton of access to information. But in some ways, that's really unfortunate also, because with access to all of that, I also have access to these picture perfect displays of other people's lives and comparisons. It's yeah, it's not apples to apples. It's not. And and so I cannot be a fantastic, fun mom who makes great Pinterest projects and has a perfectly clean house and feeds my kids only homemade organic baby food. And, you know, has a rockin' model type body. And I can't do all of those things. I can't do all of those things and not be on high doses of antidepressants. (laughs) So. (laughs) Or amphetamines. Right. (laughs) So I had to learn to prioritize. And, you know, if you listen to the podcast, you know that feeding is not a priority for us. (laughs) Um, we, we do, you know, we joke around that we feed our kids peanut butter and we really do. We feed them peanut butter every day, but, um, we do also introduce our kids to new foods often. 
Well, uh-huh. and we prioritize the family time. Like every night, the kids get a, two stories, a, 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 what we call a regular story and a Bible story, as if the Bible story is not regular. Right. And, uh, <laughs> you know, prayer and a song. And there's 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 some routinated things that we do. Absolutely. Um, that maybe some others don't. And that's fine. Yeah. So, so there are other places that we just have said, this is a bigger priority for us. And we are learning and growing to make some other important things still a priority, (laughs) you know, like brushing their teeth. Um, so, so if you are, if you are a parent and you're struggling, uh, we want to tell you uh, along with those new parents out there, people who are about to be new parents, sit down and think about what is important to your family. You know, I've talked before about my cousin, who um, her kids are not fantastic sleepers, but my goodness, they will eat anything. Right. They are awesome eaters. And she and her husband are foodies. And so that's important to them that their kids are, are great eaters. And, you know, I think some of that, along with the sleep stuff for us, we have kids who sleep fantastically. Um, they get up crazy early, but they <laughs> sleep really well. Um, you know, I think some of that is genetics. Um, but I think some of it too, is that you've prioritized what's important and, and then take that prioritize what's important for your family. What will make your family function? Well, not just that child, but your whole family, make it a priority and then put the other stuff away and stop comparing yourself. Yeah. If you, if you are struggling or if you'd like to Tell us your story and we could get to know you. Um, we've set up an email address at pod. It's a podcast at Micah and And uh, most we try to do our best to respond to those. Yes. Those emails. So you're welcome to do that. If you have questions, um, if we can't find the answer, we can can either find a friend who probably can answer it or we'll make one up. <laughs> um, but we won't send you back a blank email. So uh, but you can send us an email at podcast at Micah and dot com. Um, you can also visit com. We have several articles out there that might be of interest. And if you're a new parent or you have friends that are becoming new parents, uh, share this episode with them. Even if uh, even if they know a lot of the stuff, it may just give them a little bit of, uh, you know, a, a, a boost. You yeah, know, some encouragement. Know that <laughs> they're not the only ones. Yes. So, and then Shell, remind them of the challenge. Yes. So again, our challenge is to figure out what's important, prioritize those important things for your family and forget everything else. Yeah. It's, and that's especially true for dads because (laughs) I, I love to, uh, I love to, to have my hand in everything. It's just who I like to be. And if you're like that, then you understand. Yes. And we're not just talking about parenting here. We're talking about life. Right. Prioritize so, what's important in your life. Yeah, figure those two or three things out and go for them. Um, but if you have a list of 10 things, it's you're just not going to get anything done well. Yes. Or it's going to take forever to accomplish them. So you can that can be a litmus test for you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's pray and then we will, uh, we will go. Lord, I thank you so much for the way that you've given us the family, that uh, we are different parents now than we were uh, the first time that somebody said mommy and daddy to us. And... Uh, Lord, I just pray that you would help those that listen to us that are struggling, Lord, to have encouragement, to 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 have strength, um, to make priorities that suit the needs of the family that you're helping them to build, and to get rid of anything that doesn't really belong there. And uh, we thank you that you are a good God who loves us and wants the best for us. And so we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We will see you next week. 